again. Yeah, what well up? So we got a good one here, right? Um, this customer came in with um, excessive noise coming from the engine bay. You say you overheard it like um, last two or three days. So we bought this vehicle and it's going to um, take a look at it. So I'm just checking to see if any of the connectors on the injectors is slack or anything like that. He also mentioned that he's getting um, like a puff of black smoke coming out from the exhaust. So I'm going to just rub it up and see you know, what noise I'm getting and obtaining. Um, that's the kind of how guide me with this arm um, diagnosis. Again? Yeah, I don't think the puff of black smoke is related, but um, let me just hook up my chassis ears to this um, vehicle and see if I can narrow down where the noise is coming from. Alright, so I got the scope hooked up. Just give me a minute, let me set up. Yeah, go ahead. Alright, so I got the, the blue channel hooked up on uh, injector number one, the red number two, the green number three. Three, and then the yellow number four. So I'm just gonna let this vehicle run for a little bit. I'm gonna rev it up um, and see what um, noise vibration I'm getting. Yeah, from the looks of it, right now as it's running, you see that the amplitude and the waveform for the blue signal is very, like, very large compared to the others. Um, and so I'm just gonna get, take this capture real quick, and then I'm gonna um, let the customer just rev the vehicle so I can analyze to see where this. Um, this noise, the excessive noise is coming from. Okay, so let's check. Let's give me a minute. Yeah, this engine was recently rebuilt within like a month and a half ago. So, you know, the customer is just kind of, you know, weary right now thinking there's something wrong with the engine. But let's analyze this on waveform. Right, so if you notice, I'm getting a large spike on the blue the number one cylinder, right, arm um, injector. Right, it sounds like a lot of noise coming from there. It, as I said, I got it hooked up to various parts of the um, the engine bay. I got the blue one right now hooked up to the front um, area of the, the engine by the belt. Right, And you see that the pulse for the the waveform is very large and it's standing out no matter what I'm doing, you know, scrolling through. So that kind of helped me narrow down where it's coming from, the excessive noises. Right, um, the, the gold one, with the yellow one yellow channel which is number four that also is very large but i mean as i said right now i got it hooked up to the injector so that's probably why you're getting a large spike but the blue one um, i hooked it i moved it from different places in the front cover i'm still getting like a large spike so that's kind of helped me narrow down where this excessive noise is coming from if you notice the red and the green is not that high in comparison to the others but i'm noticing the amplitude and the frequency of the blue channel is very large right so as i said let me just um continue analyzing this before i take remove a cover or remove the valve cover or anything of that nature yeah so i just got the okay from the customer to go into the front cover and this was found basically a damaged timing tensioner right this was pushed this was recently purchased like a month and a half ago as i said right and you as you can see i'm moving this with my finger right while i'm holding the camera effortless so that's not that's not how it's supposed to be right so i'm going to double check my timing also to make sure it's on point before i go back up with this engine approximately 10 hours later what we're going to do here is replace this um, tension tensioner timing belt tensioner on this Ford PT50 right um, this is the idle pulley this is the new tension that came out of this box here right this was the old one what happened was this was a uh, we reinstalled this like a month and a half ago and customer was complaining about hearing noise and we took off the tension we saw that the tension was damaged and uh, looked like the spring was cracked also, right? So, what can I say? Um, right, so we're gonna go and replace this on this engine. All right, it's the timing belt. Just, uh, just take this off. All right, it's a new timing belt that we had installed, as I said, about a month ago. All right, so I'm gonna just check for my timing, make sure my timing is on. All right, you see how it's lined up there. And let's look at the bottom. Looking at this little notch right here, cut in the cutout. So that means my timing is on so far. All right, I'm gonna install the belt first. 
and then the tensioner and then I'm uh, going to put on the idle pulley so just give me a minute and I'll hook everything up and then I'll start back to record I'm installing the tensioner first right because this um, lip here on the exhaust right it's kind of tricky to get the belt over it so I'm going to install this tensioner first and then I'm going to put on the belt and I'm going to put the idle pulley on last so let me just run this up real quick so just um, place the tensioner here I didn't lock the 10 bolt I just um, put it in the up like in a um, track position so I can slip on the belt upon the idle pulley then I will just swing that down and make sure my timing marks is on point here it is right if it isn't you just use a 19 millimeter it's rotated a little bit right and well my crankshaft is lined up down there on this notch here so as I said let me just hook it up now it's kind of difficult to do with um, one hand so making sure that my timing marks is on point this is one and these are on point up here so I'm gonna put this pull out this pin using a screwdriver or something like that but before I do that I gotta talk these bolts off right so as I said this is 50 and that one is 10 newton meters so let me do that and then um as I said alright so using a digital torque wrench I'm gonna torque this off to 50 newton meters you don't have to use a um this you could use a normal torque wrench right but I, or pull it by hand but I like to just make sure you know doing the right thing 50 newton meters when it starts to beep Right, so that's 50 there. Do this one. So right, so the the links for this torque wrench is in the description. So make sure and smash that link. Right, I'm gonna set this to 10 newton meters. So you can torque that one off before I pull the pin. Right, so that was 10 newton meters. This one, so yeah, again, All right, and those are 50. So I'm gonna rotate the engine and make sure all my timing uh, marks is lined up before I pull the pin. For matter of fact, snap, I gotta um, pull the pin first and then make sure my timing line up. My fault. As I said, man, I'm just rotating, I'm trying to flim and rotate at the same time to make sure that all my timing gears, timing marks are line up. Right, so to go a little bit more. That looks like it's on point down there. Right, so yeah, a little thing. Right, so it looks like my timing is on. I'm gonna finish mount up the front of this vehicle. Um, replenish the coolant. Right, I got the fan, the fan strout in. I got the tension in the um, alternator belt, and I gotta finish close up, um, button up this radiator hose and stuff like that. So once I'm finished that and complete that, I'm gonna start this vehicle, and yeah, that should be it. So I'm gonna start up the vehicle now. Um, right, so my timing marks are on point. Right, the upper and the lower. My right, tension is talked off, idle pulley talked off, coolant replenish, fan stroke and fan is in place and the hose. So get and start. So basically what we have here was a 
four seat high low sensor, I mean sensor, timing belt. Yeah, for the fix. Okay, so if you like what you saw, smash that link, share, like, comment, understand. I appreciate all the help, support. Um, the links for the tool that I use is always in the description, so you can just take a look at it. That will help the, um, the channel a lot. Yeah, and basically just sum it up as a fix. Alright, so thanks for watching. Until next time.